sometimes players are stupid. Like, really, really goddamn stupid. So stupid that it hurts to even think about. So, DMs and players alike, let me know. What was a moment that was so stupid it still hurts to think about? Leave it in the comments below. But before we continue, here's a little word from our sponsor, Erevan's Guide to Death and Beyond. Erevan's Guide to Death and Beyond is an upcoming 350-page tome of dark spells, unholy monsters, arcane craftable items, and undying mega bosses for D&D 5th edition. That answers one question. Can a party go on after a TPK? It's packed with plenty of new content and original mechanics like an undead grafting system, an undying ship that you can upgrade across your adventures, eight new races, 10 mega bosses, and the profane lairs they dwell in, arcane familiars, dark subclasses, and everything you need to craft an accursed tale for your players to enjoy. Enter a world where the power of death is weakened. Watch your comrades fall, only to rise again as an undead, and embark on a campaign that takes your party from level 1 to level 10, shrouded in the horrors of a setting agnostic story, sure to grip your whole table. The Kickstarter is now live. Support the release to gain access to rewards like a free Liquid Core Soul River D20, superb discounts off the final release, highly detailed original miniatures, and more. Links are in the description below. The party is sent to survey a location in an old map. The map is scribbled down by an NPC whom I've explicitly made out to be absent-minded, clumsy, and forgetful. It leaves a few notes on the map, most of which are pretty useless throwaway jokes. One location is marked Haunted Woods, paired with a cartoon drawing of a spooky ghost. Ooh. Players ask the NPC if the woods are actually haunted, and the NPC admits that they don't really know. They have never seen a ghost and don't know the first thing about them. Player asks me to roll to see if his character would know if undead are common in this area. I tell them not to roll because they know for a fact that undead cannot be found in this region. Another NPC, who is actually knowledgeable, points out that the woods are, indeed, not haunted. I clarify out of character that the haunted woods bit was simply a joke and it's just a regular forest. Before they depart, I have the quest giver give them some money to buy supplies before the trip and have them point out that they should get climbing equipment because they'll have to cross the mountains. They spend it all on things to fight undead and don't buy any climbing equipment. I remind them that there aren't any undead and that their travel speed will be halved without enough climbing tools for everyone. Oh, they don't care. Later on, the path to the objective is straight through the woods. We waste like 30 minutes discussing alternative paths to avoid going through the haunted woods. Ooh. I wrapped that game up before doing everything I had planned because the experience was absolutely miserable. Like, holy hell, it's like they didn't hear a thing I said. I wasn't the GM here, but another player in the group. Our party comes across a magical obelisk. It's emitting great amounts of arcane energy. The DM describes a bird flying too close to it and how it is obliterated by the power. Oh my, I touch it with my staff! Apparently, he thought that the energy would go into the staff and turn it into a super powerful item. Because, of course he would do that. Yeah, why wouldn't it do that? Ten player game. Right at the start of the game, we're given a map. Nobody can agree who gets to carry the map. After a lot of arguing, one player takes the map and just burns it. Now nobody gets the map. Urban Heroes, modern superhero setting. Party of five is a motley crew of old farts plus their 20-something handler. Handler can see through walls and skin at will at the cost of nosebleeds. The others, on the other hand, will run the gamut from having super hearing if it's an odd day of the month and super smell if it's an even day, to having skin as tough as titanium, belching fire when they cough, at cost of looking like a misshapen miniature colossus of Rhodes that also needs painkillers afterwards. Notably, none of them have super strength or any form of telekinesis. 
While trying to rescue a PC's granddaughter, the group reaches the kidnapper's warehouse. The group has made a lot of noise, so the kidnappers have barricaded a door. But thanks to the handler's vision and the superhero's odd day power, they know that the kidnappers are planning to fortify the windows above and then try to ambush the group with guns and crowbars. The mini colossus asks to the others if they think they can catch them by surprise if they break down the barricaded door that they have right in front of them. I wouldn't do that if I were you, sir. You might hurt yourself badly. I'm 77, goddammit! I know damn well what I can and cannot do! Son of a bitch! Uh, don't you want me to disassemble the door? It would make it way easier to throw off all of that crap they piled up. No, you frickin' moron! A child's life is at stake! Oh, I haven't had stake in years. I point out that his skin isn't literally titanium, and that the door is an emergency one. He insists both in and out of character, so his character prepares a shoulder charge, grits his teeth or dentures at this point, and shatters his entire right arm, sending him rolling on the floor in pain while also making a buttload of noise. The handler, causing himself more nosebleeds, then recommended, sees this. That PC's arm bones are now a jigsaw puzzle. No thanks to his action and his skin. And the kidnappers are now agitated and going for the guns. So by the time the combat is over, the handler is bleeding from more than the nose. <laughs> One guy is dead and the kidnapped girl barely survived the bullet to the head. Oh and the downed PC got his other arm broken when trying to grab a thug's leg, only to get it crunched up. At least the player understood how idiotic it was after a few days passed, but god damn was it frustrating to watch. My party had not just one, but two inexcusably stupid players. I mostly let them have their fun hurting each other and doing stupid stuff. Only really step in if they are about to get themselves killed or, I don't know, piss off an important NPC. The group is also extremely horrible in combat, to the point where I often have to take charge of commanding people what to do so a TPK doesn't even happen from medium encounters and I had to dip into being a healer. The DM realizes this and decides to separate me from the group for a small part of the dungeon through a trap. I just sit around doing nothing. The players are in a swampy sewer place. The first thing this idiot decides to do is to attack a giant fuck off hippo monster that was just minding its own business. Didn't even have any items. Everyone decides to fight it instead of running. A TPK is about to happen with one person already dropped, so the DM thinks it's a good time to drop me back in the game managed to do enough damage and distract the monster for the last two people to finish it off. For the first time in the game, I get dropped to zero HP and only survived because I had to mention that I have a very visible medkit on me when somebody went to revive me. The one other person died because the cleric forgot he had healing magic. How do you forget that kind of thing? GM here. This was in a campaign using Shadow of the Demon Lord. Possible spoilers. Have the group of players traveling to the front lines of an emerging war. The players find a military camp from an allied faction. One of them, for some goofy reason, decides to look for the supplies tent. I tell them it's heavily guarded. He tries to sneak past the guards, but once inside, fails the stealth roll. The guards go inside to look for him while also alerting other guards. The player tries to sneak from the backup guards but fails miserably. The player then tries to single-handedly fight five armed soldiers. Well, surprise, surprise, the player gets captured. The next day comes and the party leaves the encampment to press on onward towards their objective. The captured character, however, gets executed in a public beheading and accused of treason. Players all gasps in shock. <gasps> How could the DM do this? 
I don't know. Consequences for dumbass actions, maybe? Here's the scene. The party was searching a haunted mansion for heirloom family jewels, and they did find a safe in the basement. Within the safe was a bag. It's a bag of holding. And inside of that is a hoard of riches and... A banshee! The numbskull hero of our story grabs the bag and runs. The banshee follows and ignores the other PCs. Why is she chasing me? Uh, because you stole her jewels? He then tries to outrun a f***ing ghost! Oh, his character is fast, but the banshee ignores terrain. His character can hide, but the banshee can detect life. His character will tire, but the banshee will not. He seethes as the banshee gains on him. <sighs> I've used all my kit and she's still gaining. How is that fair? This player is now some distance from the party and at this point, they have no idea where he is and he still won't drop the bag. Eventually, they manage to track this guy down. They find him just after he's knocked unconscious and the banshee is returning to the mansion only just barely saving his life. Why did you assume she wouldn't follow you? I thought she couldn't leave the mansion. Why? Uh... Okay, let's try this again. Why didn't you drop the bag? Uh... Yeah, I... So I was playing in a game with four other unironic critical role enthusiasts. Everyone makes characters that are mostly about playing up and showcasing how special they are, leaving me to permanently babysit them because the DM always liked to throw out Lethal Encounters custom tooled for maximum <coughs> fun. Now what this actually means or translates to is when things turn lethal or stressful, my character and I are thinking about how to get the hell out of Dodge, while everyone else reverts to Oh, how can I show how expressive and interesting my character is? Oh. There was one case where a PC died only because they were the one person who my PC couldn't physically pick up and throw behind cover. They didn't even try to get behind cover themselves. They just stood there being dramatic. And then the next two sessions were spent moping by other PCs about the tragic loss. Of <laughs> My character loses an arm in the process of pulling one behind cover. Every single encounter, my PC, which is a Loxodon druid, is up front tanking, or simply cleaning up messes. Like when half the party decides to try to sleep in a magical carnivorous grove. We make it to the Unsely Court to rescue the NPC. Literally no one can control themselves, not even the NPC. Monk is screwing with the Archfey by using banishment scrolls. The Elven Paladin is throwing a fit at my character and everything around him because, I don't know, moody much? Another player's character can't hack anything being more powerful than her, so she starts to get uppity, and my character is left to get into the middle of it. As the party leaves the Fey Wild, I retire my Loxodon Druid to play another character as he splits off to go and try to regrow his arm with fairy magic. The next session is a TPK. This was not a rare event. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell. Yeah, you listening in right now, do all those things and leave a comment down below. Why? Because we want to know. What was a moment that was so freaking stupid that it still hurts to think about? We love you all. Be safe out there. See you next time, and bye for now.